Hey, it's Molly. Welcome back to my channel as we take a look at the Leo New Moon. Happening on August 4th, 2024 at 713 a.m. That's Eastern Time, so be sure and adjust for your location on the planet. So here is the chart for the Leo New Moon where we find the Sun and the Moon together at 12 degrees of Leo in 34 minutes. So we round up to 13 degrees and then you would identify the house in your chart where you have 13 degrees of Leo as this is where a new beginning is emerging for you with these Leo themes and expressions. Now during the new moon, the sky is the darkest and that is when an intention is seated and the energy begins to emerge and unravel through the full lunar cycle. And with this particular new moon, we have the sun in its home sign of Leo, very strong and robust, working with the moon in Leo, also feeling the influence of Leo confidence, strength, creativity. And so during this new moon, there could be a part of you that needs to express yourself, that needs to do something creative, to be in your power, to stabilize, and to feel good about who you are. There could be also something in your heart that you're feeling. This relates to matters of love, which is Leo, and also a healthy sense of self so that you can feel good putting yourself out there in some capacity. Leo is the energy that can take a risk, a risk on being your true self. And this could be a very encouraging energy where you feel that you're ready to do something, to go for it. Uh, the Leo energy is a fire sign, so there is inspiration, action, motivation. Needing to move the energy in some capacity could also be what you're feeling around the new moon. Okay, I brought the chart closer um, as we get into more of the specifics here. So in addition to the sun and the moon being conjunct, they are working favorably with the two planets in Gemini. Mars at 9 degrees 57 minutes and Jupiter at 15 degrees of Gemini. Now Mars is coming up behind this Jupiter. And as Mars approaches Jupiter, the energy here in Gemini gets stronger. It becomes more impulsive even because this Mars is not only how we move ahead, take action, assert ourselves, but think of Mars as adrenaline. And Mars is bringing in more to what Jupiter in Gemini has been bringing to your mental awareness. And Jupiter is not strong in Gemini because it is, it is furthest from its home sign of Sagittarius. But this Jupiter has expectations, wisdom, assumptions that Jupiter brings in to give us faith, optimism, hope. There's also spiritual protection with Jupiter. And with Jupiter in Gemini, it's important to talk about what's on your mind, to not just make assumptions, to ensure you have all the accurate information or details, that it's not exaggerated, that what you are thinking about actually has some kind of useful application. Gemini is rational, logical, conversational. So there could be some good insights that you're understanding, some pieces that are coming together. And then here comes Mars that gives it a surge. And this is where you could feel movement now, like you're ready to say something, you're ready to do something um, that you've been thinking about. And you could feel that there's something you want to get off your chest, um, maybe it's been stuck in your head and you've been trying to find the right timing for something. This energy is working favorably with the new moon in Leo. And I feel that there is beautiful support for personal expression, especially from the heart or from a place of power. Just, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to say it. Or even a sense of knowing now how you want to put whatever you've been developing, 
uh, creating into words. So there's a very nice synergy here between the Leo and Gemini areas of your chart. There could be a lot that is coming together. It's connecting and it makes sense, which is something that the Gemini energy needs. It needs to understand. This is also the teacher and the student. Uh, that's how I see the glyph as well, because Gemini is a duality sign. And so not only is it what you're learning, but then where you feel that you're adequate in speaking about it and sharing and teaching. And so there could be something here that you're ready to do that is bold, different, new. Then we also have the energies in Leo and the energies in Gemini working favorably with the North Node in Aries now at eight degrees. And this is what you are fated to understand about yourself, where you are being supported to do something on your own terms and to move into more of your potential. I feel that with the Leo new moon trining that North Node in Aries, you could feel ready to align with a dream, an invitation, a gut level instinct that you know is correct for you. And the mind is on board with it. You're mentally ready, mentally prepared, feeling a yes. And this can open up some opportunities, doorways, anything that has your name on it is supported here and is meant to move ahead. I mean, this is the fire sign energy and this is strong Mars. And keep in mind that this Mars is ruling the North Node in Aries. And so Mars wants to do something with all the information he has, with what's on his mind. It's, I'm also feeling here in this alignment between Aries, Gemini, and Leo is that you could have a sense of what is developing in your heart space and in your solar plexus. It's connecting to your Gemini throat chakra and third eye chakra, what you've been thinking about contemplating that you need to say. And then this Aries energy relates to the root chakra of feeling safe, strong, and able to move in this direction. So these three points in your chart are strong and they're ready to go. But there's a lot more going on here, okay? So I wanted to start with that because obviously that is the new moon energy, but there's more happening here that depending on your own energy and your own chart, you could also be feeling it quite personally. So now I wanna to move to this Venus at 29 degrees of Leo, which is, she's now moving away from the square to Uranus at 26, almost 27 Taurus. The square here, I actually feel it is more beneficial with Venus because Venus squares are meant to reveal more and they're not as harsh or as intense. But if you have planets or points in the late degrees of the fixed signs, you are gonna feel it more personally. The Venus square is receiving this electrifying surge from Uranus in Taurus about what she really wants and what she really values. And Venus is the ruling sign of Taurus. So something could be, I feel like hitting you in the heart, hitting you in a place that makes it clear evident what you want, what you don't want. She's at a completion point here in Leo. And Uranus has been shaking her up a few days before this new moon is exact. And there's fast moving energy with Uranus, even though it's in Taurus, which is patient, observing, more of let's just take it step by step. That's not... The case here, there is electrifying developments. Maybe you could be getting some kind of message or clarity or 
something coming through, especially from a female, which is Venus or feminine energy, that is a wake up call or something that shakes you up that you're meant to know, you're meant to see. And it's meant to even crack you open into more of what is available to you. Because this Venus in Leo is such a creative force and she can be very confident, you could have some realizations here around your self-worth, personal value systems, of what you own, what you possess, what you want to create. You could have breakthroughs in your creative process around this Leo new moon. Now on the same day, she then moves into Virgo. And you can see here that Mercury is at four degrees of Virgo. And the S right there is for the station, station retrograde. So on this same day as the Leo new moon, Venus goes into Virgo, Mercury stations retrograde in Virgo, and Virgo is about the details. How? How is this going to happen? How is this going to work? What is the process? What are the particulars? So this, Vir this Mercury in Virgo is strong in Virgo, but now needs to review and think things through clearly, which could feel like a slowdown to all this faster moving energy here that I've just touched on including this Uranus squaring Venus, it's, it's reviewing what has been presented and evaluating it clearly, methodically, analyzing it. And this Mercury is going to travel back into Leo to revisit what needs to be strengthened within you. So for all of this exciting, fun, invigorating energy from fire and air signs, there is a part of you that is grounded, has to be grounded through Virgo to ensure things line up and that what you're doing is going to work. So that is an important influence here with the Leo new moon, sort of like, yeah, there's things you want to start, but questions could arise, especially if you're doing something bold and different and you're going for it. There's a part of your mind that could actually overanalyze it. And with this Mercury stationing retrograde, Mercury rules both of the energies here in Gemini. And so there could be something that you just want to make sure you've got the details straight and that would be wise to trust. And then people will ask, well, should you wait and not do it during the Mercury retrograde? And I feel this energy has to move. It's like you have to take action and do something. But I would say expect more conversation, more information to review particulars, make sure you've got everything straight. So whatever you get going on or whatever calls to you during the new moon, give yourself that appropriate time to assess, refine, and discern what is lining up, especially the logistics. Now, there's more going on in the chart here as we dig in deeper. So going back to this Jupiter at 15 degrees of Gemini, Jupiter is approaching an exact opening square to Saturn retrograde at 18 degrees during this new moon, and they are going to have their square at 17 degrees and this is going to be about remaining flexible and conscientious of changes and knowing that it's like anything you're counting on is going to be shifting and evolving because these are happening in the mutable signs, Gemini and Pisces, which is about change. And when they are exact, August 19th, which is the Aquarius new moon. That's a wowzer. I'm sorry, Aquarius full moon. The Aquarius full moon is a wowzer. I'll have that video for you shortly. And there is a bigger creative process that you're moving through where it starts as one thing and it's going to shift into something else. And think of this Saturn in Pisces as removing the extra 
and asking you to look at what can you really take on? What can you really handle? Now, the energy in Gemini wants to do a lot, wants to do it quickly, has ideas about how and where to go and all the, all the things that Gemini seeks. And then this Saturn in Pisces is going to provide some kind of reality check. Do you have the energy for that? Do you have the time? Are you biting off more than you can chew? And so there is a, it's like an energetic retraction here to all the big visions, dreams, thoughts, plans. And as we move into August, it changes even more. And so this is where people say, oh, well, then maybe I shouldn't do the thing. And trust what's correct for you. I, I can't give you one clear answer. That's just for you to know what is best for you. But I think the energy is do what is calling to you. Trust, you know, where you're feeling the fire energy light you up, light you up with excitement. And then know that there might be, you know, version 2.0 especially throughout August. Now, another energy in this chart that I think is quite significant goes back to Venus. So Venus is here at 29 degrees of, Merc um, 29 degrees of Leo. And not only is she getting a square from Uranus in Taurus, but she's on the receiving end of a yod, a finger of God, from this Pluto, retrograde in Aquarius at zero degrees and this Neptune retrograde at 29 degrees of Pisces. So that's what these green lines are pointing here at Venus. Mercury retrograde will also travel through this point because Mercury goes back to 21 Leo. And so this Venus is really being electrified by Uranus and then working with Neptune and Pluto powerfully. Pluto in Aquarius is bringing up more outside opinions, feedback, group energies, is opening you up to what your future self desires. And I feel that this energy to Venus, where she can resist, she can resist what is even for her best and highest good because she doesn't know how it will serve her or how it will work for her or if she even wants it. And you could be feeling like there's messages from your future self around where you want to go but maybe you're resisting it. And this in conjunct to Venus has a tension that is not easily resolved and has a sense of not budging based on uncertainty. But Pluto is pulsing these electrical currents these electrical cosmic, fre cosmic frequencies. And it's asking you to look at what do you want and don't worry about the opinions of others or the groups or the audience or the comments or what other people are doing because this Pluto is actually holding the intention of transforming you into more of your multidimensional self and the Venus in Leo doesn't always see that or get it at that level. And then up here with this Neptune retrograde in Pisces at the end of the whole zodiac wheel, Neptune is asking to fully surrender and let go of something that maybe has already served its time, served its purpose in your heart. And keep in mind that with this Venus at 29 Leo, the end of Leo, there is an understanding here of more of what 
you want and what you need and what you don't want. And there could be some very strong intuitive messages, emotional messages, energy you're feeling that is saying one thing and your ego is fighting it. And your ego is trying to shut it down or a part of you isn't sure if that's really correct or what you want. And then it brings our story back to Uranus that's also cracking open this Venus. So even though it's a Leo new moon, and keep in mind, new moons are, they're fast moving. You know, they don't last long. The energy is strong and then it moves on. This Venus is actually receiving, I would say, the most intense energy in this chart because she's connecting with the three outer planets that are reprogramming her. And they're reprogramming her in a way that is foreign to her. So she's in fire, air, water, earth. So she's receiving a lot of energy that's not even her own element. I think right before the Leo new moon, there could be things coming up within you that you're meant to shake off and release because you don't need them for the future. This is interesting. Um, I'm feeling like if you have any grief in your heart, grief in your heart, endings, closures, release, something you haven't gotten over, something that's still, you know, taking up a corner of your heart, simply love that part of you for how it shaped you, formed you, what you learned, what you came to understand about what you need. And I'm feeling this really in the love dynamic. And I think that what is happening with these outer planets is that they're giving this Venus new energy for moving forward and to transition into a higher version of herself. And then she moves into Virgo and the energy of Venus and Virgo is quieter and reflective, and it's meant to connect the mind and the body. That's one of the best intentions of Virgo, is that you're able to align and recalibrate with the practicality of what you need and to care for yourself, mind, body, soul. And so I just, I just keep coming back to this Venus. Like she's getting some big stuff here. And that's important to note. Now she did previously have this exact trine to Chiron in Aries. Retrograde the end of July. And that could have provided her with an understanding of what she is learning about her needs because the Chiron energy can be trauma, abuse, what you did not get, what you did not receive, that you're healing for yourself and understanding more of who you are now, which is where that North Node in Aries is also opening up and revealing. So for all the ways this is a Leo new moon focused on the strength and sense of self that you're connecting to within, within who you are, your, your light. There's a lot with this Venus. And again, as she moves into Virgo and she travels through Virgo, she's going to have then a trine to this Uranus at 26 of Taurus. And that's when something's really going to click and connect. And she moves fast in Virgo in August because she enters Libra by the end of August. So things are going to be coming together for her that she understands. And the Mercury retrograde is helping with the processing and assessing and, and reconsidering. 
So there's a lot going on here and it's, it's even contradictory because for all the ways, again, you want to get going and move ahead, there's something you're feeling maybe in your soul that is evolving and you know it and you can feel it. And then this energy in August of Saturn and Jupiter being in a square is meant to keep your expectations open, keep your thoughts open. I have a separate video for you also describing that uh, Saturn and Jupiter square. And as Mercury retrograde moves across these late degrees of Leo, and Mercury is also under the influence of these three outer planets, square in conjunct, in conjunct that creates that finger of God, um, there is more that will be coming to light around what is best for you now, what you are allowing to fall away, and what you are powerfully trusting to show up as well. So it's a very interesting dance here with this Leo new moon, but I hope this supports you with anything you're moving through or trying to figure out or sitting with. Um, I think that August is quite a dynamic month and you might be surprised where you're at by the end of the month. It's one of those months that has the shakeups that could land you in some surprising places that are better, better than what you maybe conceived or thought was possible. And I'll be back soon to go over that Aquarius full moon because <laughs> it's quite an interesting one. So thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your likes, your comments, your subscribes, your shares, all that. Thank you so much. And I'll see you back here soon.